This video is brought to you by Captivating History. Wisconsin's beautiful pristine lakes, imposing verdant forests, and breathtaking scenery are well-known sites that attract many tourists every year. Nature is often the main reason many people visit. They come to fish in the waters, kayak along its rivers, and hunt in its forests. However, perhaps unbeknownst to many, Wisconsin has a rich and intriguing history to discover and investigate. Its history mirrors that of the United States and can be viewed through this lens, yet there are compelling stories of Wisconsin in its own right. From the history of the Native American tribes to the French period after Jean Nicolet's landing, from the journey from British colonization to statehood to the stories of more modern tragedies, Wisconsin's history is a compelling tapestry of events worthy of study. The first known inhabitants of the area, now known as Wisconsin, were Paleo-Indians. They first arrived around 12,000 years ago as a retreating glacier had left behind a tundra home to large animals such as mammoths and mastodons. The Boaz Mastodon, discovered by a group of boys playing in Boaz, Wisconsin, shows that the Paleo-Indians who lived here hunted these large mammals as arrowheads were found during the excavation. From these inhabitants 12,000 years ago, a succession of cultures had progressed, from the Hopewell culture to the Woodland culture to the Mississippian culture development. These early peoples, in turn, brought new skills and trade networks with them, from the cultivation of maize to the building of defensive mounds that can still be seen today. By the time the Europeans arrived, the area was inhabited by a complex network of Native American tribes, including the Dakota Oyate, the Ho-Chunk, and the Menominee. Jean Nicolet was the first known European explorer to reach the Wisconsin region in 1634. He was searching for a northwest passage to reach China. Although Nicolet is said to have made contact with the local tribes and engaged in peaceful relations, the journey to French colonization was not smooth. There was the Beaver Wars in the 1650s between the Iroquois and the French traders, resulting from disagreements over the burgeoning fur trade. These conflicts held off French explorers from settling initially. However, France eventually laid claim to Wisconsin as part of its territory in the New World in 1672. This involved building forts around the Lake Michigan area to protect and fortify its trade networks, though these forts were essentially glorified storehouses for the furs. The French also established a Jesuit mission to try to evangelize the locals. Interestingly, the modern spelling of Wisconsin was not coined initially. In his diary, the French explorer, Father Jacques Marquette, wrote, The river on which we embarked is called the Miscousing. It's very wide. It has a sandy bottom. The Native American tribes called the river and its surrounding region Miscousing, which evolved to become Wisconsin, officially legalized in 1845. French conflict with the Native Americans did not end. Constantly trying to obtain the best fur trade deals, the French played different tribes against each other, supporting various chiefs and causing conflict. In the 1720s, the anti-French Fox tribe, led by war chief Kiala, raided French settlements on the Mississippi River. The resulting war saw many Native American tribes, including the Dakota and the Illinois peoples, displaced and forced to move south onto the Great Plains. Moving into the 1760s, the lucrative fur trade provided the catalyst for war once again as British traders moved into the area to set up their own trade networks. Part of a broader struggle between France and Great Britain over influence in the New World, the British overcame the French. In 1763, Wisconsin was part of the territory ceded to British rule in the Treaty of Paris. Wisconsin had a new colonizing force. Only when Wisconsin became a British colony did the first lifelong settlers start to come to the area instead of fur traders and missionaries. The British explorer Jonathan Carver was commissioned to explore the Great Lakes area and was the first individual to map out the wilderness. Jonathan spent several years adventuring throughout the Great Lakes area, following the Minnesota River deeper into Wisconsin than most white men had ever dared to go. He spent time with the local tribes and learned their ways. Jonathan kept a detailed journal, drawing intricate maps of Wisconsin that were so outstanding that many considered them a work of fiction. This was because his expedition had not been officially authorized and, in fact, he never received a penny for his efforts. However, 
Carver's exploration had paved the way for ever more settlers, and settlements like Green Bay flourished. The fur trade was booming, but British farmers also set about cultivating the soil. However, Green Bay and Wisconsin's time as a British colony didn't last long, 20 years to be precise, as a certain revolution saw a new country's birth. At the end of the Revolutionary War in 1783, Wisconsin became part of the United States. It became part of the Northwestern Territory, containing the future states of Wisconsin, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. However, the region effectively remained in British control until the War of 1812. The U.S. asserted its authority in the 1815 Treaty of Ghent. However, Wisconsin's strife was to continue with a series of war with the Indian tribes, the most famous being the Black Hawk War which prevented significant settlement in the area now under Michigan control. During this period, there was an unfortunate shift in popular thinking. For many years, there have been concerted efforts to forge peaceful agreements and relationships with the tribes in Wisconsin. However, with the succession of Indian wars, the Indians gained a violent, savage reputation in the popular imagination, and many settlers grew to feel that the tribes should be expelled. This was exacerbated by the fact that lead had been discovered in Wisconsin. More settlers were looking to come for work in the mines, but as an abundance of Native American tribes in the area would be seen as an obstacle to further settlement. The war saw a group of Native Americans, led by Chief Blackhawk, attempt to resettle in the area they had been displaced from. Of the 15 battles in the war, six took place in what is now Wisconsin. As with many of the complex conflicts between U.S. forces and Native American tribes, some tribes fought alongside U.S. soldiers against the British band led by Black Hawk. In the end, Black Hawk and his followers were defeated. In 1836, the U.S. Congress created the Wisconsin Territory. The first capital was in Belmont, but it was soon moved in 1838 to the current capital of Madison. Wisconsin grew continuously and it joined the Union on May 29, 1848, becoming the 30th state. Moving forward to the American Civil War, Wisconsin has a special place in history, as it was in Ripon, Wisconsin, that the Republican Party was formed in 1854. A young lawyer and Wisconsinite, Alvin Earl Bove, was passionately anti-slavery in the new states. Seeing there was no political party willing to take a stand against slavery, he decided to make his own. The Republican Party was born in the Little White Schoolhouse in Ripon, Wisconsin on May 20, 1854. While not strictly abolitionist, the foundations of the party and the opinions of its later leader, Abraham Lincoln, would go on to define the American Civil War. No battles were fought in Wisconsin during the war, but 90,000 Wisconsinites were sent to fight for the North. Post-Civil War, Wisconsin entered into its Gilded Age and much of that era of economic growth was centered upon the logging industry. The growing population of the rest of the United States had an insatiable appetite for lumber. Houses, railroads, churches, schools, ships, books, newspapers, all of these had to be constructed from trees. And trees were something that Wisconsin had in wonderful abundance. As a result, the logging industry boomed in Wisconsin. However, the industry itself led directly to a great disaster in 1871 with the Great Fire of Pastico. Several factors came together to create a terrible catastrophe. After having cleared an area of trees, people would engage in slash and burn practices to clear the shrubbery so the rich soil could be farmed. This was standard practice. However, an extremely dry summer led to a perfect storm in which several smaller fires joined to create a thundering firestorm a deadly force that was essentially unstoppable. The fire raged through Pastigo, causing about 2,500 deaths and almost $5 million worth of damages. In an absurd coincidence, this event had gone largely unnoticed in national history because on the same day, there was the Great Fire of Chicago. All the newspapers reported on the event in the big city, and Pastigo's disaster did not get as much coverage. Today, Wisconsin's economy still resembles that of its Gilded Age, returning to its old agriculture and logging industries, which make up the bulk of its economy. It is well known for its many large dairy farms and cheese production, often dubbed the Dairy State. However, 
Information technology and tourism are also important parts of the economy. The old settlement of Green Bay may be better known worldwide as the home of the American football team, the Green Bay Packers. To learn more about the history of Wisconsin, then check out our book, History of Wisconsin, a captivating guide to the history of the Badger State, starting from the arrival of Jean Nicolet through the Fox Wars, War of 1812, and Gilded Age to the present. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.